Our first guest is one of the top fitness and conditioning coaches in sports today. Since the mid-1990s, Paul Winsper has worked with a number of major sports organizations, including a 10-year stint as the fitness coach for the Newcastle United Football Club, one of the top English soccer teams, and an extended tenure as the sports performance director for another well-known sports apparel manufacturer before becoming the director of athlete performance at Under Armour. We are grateful Paul has taken the time to join Jack and Joe on today's show. Man, we are pretty serious about uh, loyalty to sponsors. We, would, we, wouldn't even, we wouldn't even identify your previous employer. That's, uh... <laughs> they don't even exist. They're just out there in the realm. Uh, he, he, he must not be named. Yeah. <laughs> For our listeners and viewers, it's Nike. Um, but uh, welcome. We are thrilled to have you here. Not not uh, not merely to have you on the Joe Schmidt Show, which is sort of the, the, the foundation. No, obviously, this the, is what it's become. The, yeah. the, the, it's the foundational piece of media around here. But but we're happy to have you here because of, of all your presence represents. Uh, your, your engagement with us on trying to think about how to improve the the well-being and performance of our uh, of our student athletes. I want to start by thanking you for for all you're doing to think about these issues with Notre Dame. Yeah, thanks, Jack. It's great to be here. Um, it, it's a pretty special partnership, um, and what we're trying to do with with you and your team, and it, it's pretty exciting for me to be part of as well. So thank you. Give me you, you've you've been looking at us and working with us for a little while now give your give me your impressions of notre dame where we are where where we where our focus should be going forward uh you know what what do you see when you look at us i see i see a really big vision i see a vision that um lots of people have visions lots of people build amazing mission statements and they build the documents and the powerpoints but not many people actually execute on that but what i'm seeing is um is a big vision but the, the execution is coming along beautifully. So I'm fortunate enough to, to have a great relationship with Mike and Mike and I speak almost every week, sometimes more than once per week. Um, Mike came out and beat in Portland and I've been out here a couple of times. It's just been an amazing relationship, but the, to, to help with that big vision. And, and I think I have the ability to, I don't, I don't, I'm not with a team at this point, and there's a ton of pressure, you know, Saturday comes and you've got to get three points. And I'm traveling the world looking at the best technologies and what the best coaches are doing and the best performance guys. And to be able to bring it back and then build it into this with Mike is just amazing. Mike, so. by the way, is Mike, Mike Harris. Sorry, is Mike Harris. Yeah, yeah. Is that area yeah. up for us? No, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's so interesting. And I know you started right in, in soccer mm -hmm. um, and, or football, sorry. I mean, we're in, I, I, I struggle with the, with the two, but, what what exactly? How did you trans transition from just being a, a soccer trainer and, and being an excellent one at that? Mm. But this is such a different role now with what you know, kind of seeing all the different training styles and and kind of piecing those together to make the best thing for for your athletes now at Under Armour. Yeah, it, uh, it's a really it's a really good question. I, I I never look at the sport. I always look at the athlete, mm -hmm. um, and and everything we do is is almost like sport agnostic. So we look at how the athlete moves, we look at their readiness, we look at every single thing to do with how we put them out to perform their particular sport in an optimized state. Mm. So I never ever look at the sport. I can go and work with an NFL team, an NBA team, a soccer team, a cricket team, it doesn't matter. We look at the athlete first and, and that's the beauty of the job. And was it always that way for you? Always. So did you start, you st okay, so. Well, what I would do is, the, so I didn't I didn't actually start in soccer, I started in cricket, oh, but wow. you guys okay, don't know yeah. cricket, so it doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll, we'll not even <laughs> I mean, talk I know about that. that. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's a crazy good sport, but yeah, it's fun. Yeah. 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 It I'm takes days to play. Yeah, I know. Long, yeah. long, long time. Four days and you can still have a draw. Exactly. Like, which is, um, so I actually started in cricket and then transferred across to the soccer. Okay. Um, but I worked with a, an amazing guy um, at Durham University, Dr. Peter Warburton, and we tried to do the same way back in the 90s at Durham University. So they had the first cricket center of excellence, mm. and we had all the smartest young students coming in who were playing then professional cricket. Um, so we had a chance to test this whole model, you know, what what is excellence about and how do we how do we work with the students' academic life and their training and their nutrition and their psychology? So we, we did this way back in the 90s. And so Peter was kind of pioneering in the UK with this type of model. Yeah. You know, one of the things I've loved so much about your approach and uh, the way you've helped us is, is your focus on the practical application. One of the great examples of that for me was when you told us 
you know, in all the data we swim in, mm. you can't ever give a coach more than a couple of pieces a day, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, Absolutely. That, that, because otherwise you're not going to optimize it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, one of the big things, Jack, is to, to simplify. So I think the years of experience allow us to get to the point really, really quickly. You know, as a, as a young guy in the performance field, I'd run and tell the coach everything. You know, I had all this knowledge and I wanted everybody to know. And the coach said, so I, a great example is Sir Bobby Robson is one of the, the greatest coaches in the game of soccer. And I remember running into his room and I had this beautiful big report done by Prozone and all this amazing data. And I said, we outran Man United, you know, we did more sprints and more this. And he said, yeah, but they beat us 3-0. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you telling me this for? So I kind of, I had to learn really quickly. And then in the end, you would just go on with the report and say, guys are great. Everything's awesome. Like three things. You get, you get to say three things and make sure the three things are valid and are going to add to his, his knowledge. And if you don't have anything to say, don't say a thing. Just get out the room, <laughs> you know, so you, you learn quickly. So those three things, that's got to be difficult to decide what those three things are and, and, and what do you, how do you do that? Yeah, we, we would just look basically at the team and, and I would be working with the, uh, the assistant manager, the assistant coach, and we would just look at the basically the readiness of the team. We'd bring the, you know, the medical guys would bring their reports in and we'd just make sure it was all boiled together and we'd come in and say, 74% of the guys are good to go, all green, we're going to pull these three guys out to do this. And the coach would say, awesome, great. Wow. Now get out. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's that's a, that's really fun. So yeah. now you're now you're in this you're in this role with Under Armour. You're the director of of, of athlete performance, correct? Mm -hmm. And so how, how do you decide what to do with your time? There's obviously a limited amount of time, and I, I mean I know limited amounts about about the training world, but I know that there are so many different camps, and you could spend all of your time just researching. How do you decide what to look into and and where to go and who to talk to? And yeah, we um. We, we're very careful with our time. I mean, as you say, that have, it, it's a small team and we're looking to expand. Yeah. Um, so we have to use our time wisely. So what we do is we, and this comes back to the vision of my boss as well. Kevin Haley is yeah. the, um, I mean, he's had so many promotions. I don't know what he is now. He's <laughs> executive vice president. But, but what Kevin does is he keeps us really focused. So I speak to him regularly and he say, it's Notre Dame and it's uh, US speed skating. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Wow. Um, Okay, so what about, nope, that's it. So it keeps us razor sharp. So when I'm in the field, I try to make sure that everything's either going to work with the US speed skating guys or work with Notre Dame. So when Mike and I have the conversations, um, you know, I'm looking at the partners and saying, I think this will fit and I think this technology might work and I think we could bring these guys in and do a pilot study with Notre Dame. It's very easy to sell Notre Dame, by the way. When <laughs> I'm working with these external partners, for them, even if they're big established con you know, companies, it's really, really good for them to have Notre Dame on their resume as well. So it's not a hard sell for me to say we can trial some of this with the, the student athletes here. Oh, wow. So we keep, we keep razor focused. Um, the, the main piece is about athlete readiness. That's became an obsession is how do we measure the readiness of the athletes because this generic programming just doesn't work. We know that, you know, it's Monday, we're all gonna lift heavy. It's Tuesday, we're all gonna run fast. Right. It's doesn't work like that so we're we're trying to build these really bespoke programs to optimize the athletes yeah you know and, and um what i see increasingly is is not only by sport but within the sport by position you yeah. know very different approaches to recognizing that the 325 pound defensive lineman and the 165 pound defensive back have different needs different requirements different recovery rates and you got to get down to that level right absolutely and, and even more than that jack is you might have a 325 pound defensive tackle that shouldn't be squatting with weight on his back yet you could have a 185 pound quarterback that can squat the gym mm -hmm. it all comes down to owning the movement and being ready to perform the exercise so we, we when when i say ready we readiness we don't just look at physiological readiness like are you ready to go and run or we actually look at movement readiness. You know, is your ankle giving you the range? Is your knee stable? Is your hip mobile? Is your lumbar spine stable? Is your T-spine mobile? Because if they're not, you shouldn't really be putting load through it. And and again, I've Mike Hardy's introduced me to you, the, the athletics department. You guys have got a really talented group of guys that are embracing 
and taking this on board. So it's it's been good. Well, the challenge of keeping Joe together and ready yes, I was, takes, I was, it takes I was, an army. I was thinking about that. I was like, my ankle mobility, my shoulder mobility. <laughs> I did I did look you up, but I, I said to Mike, I'm a performance director, not a magician. So yeah. <laughs> There's really not much I can do. Yeah, exactly. like the lack of athleticism and serious injury that yeah. is really combined to make the, the, the worst of both worlds. Exactly. <laughs> How do you, uh, so you talk a lot about like, you know, the emotion, you know, motion and, and making sure the body's working for, for each and every yeah. athlete. Yeah. Obviously you're, you're the, you're the guy at Under Armour. So how do you get in with like, even just for like a, you know, somebody on our teams here at Notre Dame or even the people on the U S speed skating team, there, there's a lot of those people and there's one of you. Like, mm. How do you, how do you do that? We, we do it through collaboration and partnership. So we would look for, you know, the best platforms to assess athlete movement and readiness. And then we would bring them in through, through Mike and then, you know, we present them to the team and the team will say, yes, no, don't, no, let me have a, a deeper investigation. Um, a great example would be the Fusionetics platform. It's an amazing platform. Just look at how athletes move. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys were already speaking to them and I thought I was bringing this gem and, you know, Mike said, oh, I think we're already speaking to that group. So you guys are already doing a lot of this stuff organically mm-hmm. because you have really talented staff here. So um, my role in that was trying to, broker a deal with Fusionetics to kind of get it in and get the costs right and make sure that, you know, we're implementing the programs. So. Well, I know you're making us uh, so much better. We, I can't tell how much we value this partnership. As we said the day we announced the Under Armour partnership, maybe the thing that, ex- that excited us the most was the opportunity to partner in technology developments yeah. that benefit athletes and 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 they have delivered the greatest possible asset in your skill and expertise and we are thrilled to have you as a partner so thanks for being with us today thank and you. all you do for uh, notre dame athletics and we'll be back in a minute thank you jack thank thanks you very so much. much thanks guys thank you